Hi, my name is Tina, also known as Blooming Knitter, and this is Knitting Blooms, episode number 110. Have you seen the new Twisted Lights from Barmaids? Twisted Lights are the most incredible beeswax candle with a very long burn time. For example, the smaller of the Twisted Lights burns for approximately 20 hours. But that's not what sets it apart from other candles. Twisted Lights look exactly like small balls of yarn. They look so much like a ball of yarn, it almost looks like somebody took a ball of yarn and dipped it in wax. And just like balls of yarn, Twisted Lights comes in lots of amazing colors and they are 100% beeswax. Barmaids does not use any additives or hardeners in their candles, nor do they coat their molds with toxic mold release. You can get your Twisted Light candles at www.bar-maids.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so glad you've decided to spend your time with me. I have a very full show for you again this week. We will be covering two weeks in review, what I haven't worked on, my knitting progress, spinning progress, stash enhancement, uh, two drawings, barmaids and yazi, as well as the upcoming knit alongs and uh, spin alongs. And now for the week in review. Well, technically two weeks in review. The last time I recorded was definitely an epic recording session. <laughs> It took me almost three hours to record the last episode, but I recorded two episodes, so technically it took me about the same amount of time that it would have taken me had I recorded two separate weekends. So I think I'm just going to plan on having a very long recording schedule every two weeks. <laughs> and then record both episodes, whether it's a tutorial or question answered or what have you. And then that way I still can feel like a little bit more relaxed about uh, getting knitting done and what have you. So, so far it's working well for me. I don't know, I haven't had any feedback as far as how it's working for you guys, but hopefully it is um, okay for you guys as well. So, after I recorded, the first week after I recorded, the week was pretty much status quo, other than the fact that I stopped running. Um, I had been experiencing some pain in my left leg, in my calf, my Achilles tendon area, and I wasn't sure what was going on with that. So, I decided that I needed to let my body have a bit of a break. I had been running 40 to 50 miles a week approximately and I think that either my body was overworked or the shoes were just going bad or the wrong style for me. I had been having trouble with those shoes from the beginning um, but I just I, I couldn't convince myself that it was definitely the shoes. So, for the past two weeks, I have only been walking, and I have been walking 20 to 30 miles. So, huge difference in what I've been doing for my workout the last um, few weeks. But, thankfully, it has helped, and my, my leg is um, feeling better, and... I think I can get back to running very soon. However, I don't want to jump back into it too soon because I don't want to re-injure myself if it was an overuse injury. So I'm going to take it slow and hopefully within the next couple of weeks I can get back to running and doing more mileage. I am walking faster. Originally when I started last week walking, I was walking very slowly at like three miles an hour. And I am now walking at a pace of about four and a half to five miles an hour at a walking pace. 
And I did that. I was walking at, at a downhill grade today on the treadmill at about 4.7 miles per hour. And that seemed to be fine as long as I was on that downhill grade. Now, I don't know if it would be any different if I was on an uphill or an incline. But we'll see how it goes. I did start to feel a little bit of pain at the end of my workout today, but very, very minimal at that. So, yeah, so I've been walking, which means that I haven't been watching TV. I had put out that thread a couple of weeks ago um, about what to watch while I'm running, and I have so many fabulous suggestions, but I haven't been watching TV. Because when I walk, I can read. When I'm running, it's a little bit more difficult to read, so I don't like to read when I'm running, but when I'm walking, it's, it's easier to read. So I like to read when I'm walking, and I've got quite a bit read. I finished... Uh, three books in the last two weeks and I started a fourth book. Now granted two of them were fairly short books but the third book was a longer book a little bit longer and um, I've just been going through them. I've been it's like I can't put the books down. I want to keep reading after I'm done walking and because uh, I really do enjoy reading but I just haven't done it because I can't, usually I don't sit down long enough to read to really get into the book and it takes me forever to finish a book because of that. But, like I said, on the treadmill for an hour every day and I can get in a good hour of reading then and then when I'm off the treadmill in the evenings or before I get on the treadmill, I oh, and before I get on the treadmill I spend probably about a half an hour reading because I am trying to drink more water and I'm trying to drink 16 ounces of water before I get on the treadmill in the morning. It's crazy, I know, but it's been working so far. So that's been my workout schedule for the last couple weeks. So yeah, so after um, I recorded, I nothing really happened the first week. And then the second week, well, actually the end of the first week, I heard about what's going on with Blip TV. Tammy from the Proverbial Little Knitter podcast mentioned on her podcast two weeks ago, I think it was, that her friend who does the um, All About African Violets podcast was basically kicked off of Blip. And I know that a few of the newer video podcasters have been unable to get onto Blip They've been denied um, access or submission when they submit. I don't know. I can't remember if there was a approval process with my podcast. It was, you know, over two years ago. And um, so I know that some newer video podcasters have not been able to get on Blip, but I didn't realize that they were in the process of booting people off that didn't meet their standards. So... Tammy and um, Adrian um, are both moving over to WordPress to host their podcast. And I have just been so freaked out about what is Blip going to kick me off? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to wait for um, Blip to just cut me off because Annie, she just got kicked off right away. She... She was given a, she was sent an email and they gate said you have 14 days and then all of a sudden she couldn't get back into her account like the next day. So I'm just unsure what Blip is going to do. So I am taking action myself and I am also moving my podcast over to WordPress. Now, this does involve additional expense for me um which I wasn't expecting to have to shell out right away. Uh but it gives me the peace of mind that if Blip does one day say, you're done, then at least I have a fallback. So I've moved over to um, WordPress. I am still in the process of uploading everything. It is going to take a long time to upload. Um, I have 140 some episodes that I have to upload to WordPress and then go back and re-link everything in my, pod in my um, blog. 
So that is going to take some time. I think I am through October of 2011 of the podcast. That's the first year, and I still have a long way to go. So I'm working on that, but I am planning on staying on Blip as long as possible because the cool thing about Blip is it cross-posts for me to YouTube and uh, Facebook and Twitter and whatnot. Roku. So I am going to stay on Blip as long as possible. However, as soon as my podcast is completely uploaded to the uh, WordPress servers, I will be changing the feed to iTunes. I don't know how long that's going to take because I submitted my podcast through a uh, Blip and to try and get that link changed is going to be a pain. I'm not sure if it's going to work and I'm not sure if I'm going to have to set up a whole new podcast on iTunes or not. I will try and keep you informed about what's going on. So needless to say, because of the added expense, um, this podcast really has never been about the money or anything like that, and I will continue to do it regardless, but I am asking if you enjoy the podcast and you do not want to see it go away, if you are so inclined to donate to the podcast to help cover that annual fee uh, for WordPress because it is a hefty fee and I don't want to give it up and I don't want to go away but it is an annual fee and that's going to have to be paid every single year and if I don't pay it then my podcast won't be available anymore. So again like I said I'm not planning on ending the podcast or um, discontinuing it if I don't get donations, so please do not feel obligated to donate. But if you have a little extra money lying around and you want to support the podcast, by all means, please use the donate button that is on the blog. So, after I was finished with the stress <laughs> of blip, trying to figure out what I was going to do and all of that. I'm still working out getting my, my page set up and everything over on WordPress. That's going to be crazy. But after that, I kind of went into a knitting, I kind of lost my knitting mojo. And it took me a couple days to get out of it. I, I think just because of all the stress of thinking about, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is going to take forever. Am I going to be able to get the podcast relinked over to the, the, new, um, the new feed on uh, WordPress? It just, there's no reason for me to stress about it, but I did and I kind of just went into a little bit of a knitting funk. But I was able to get myself out of it when I started to knit swatches for an upcoming tutorial. And I just, it was, they were basic swatches and it was just mindless knitting and I could just knit and not even think about it. And that was kind of what helped me to get out of my knitting funk um, this past week. And while I was knitting those swatches, I finally tried the magic knot that was mentioned by Paula of the Knitting Pipeline a few episodes ago. Uh, she had said she was trying some different things instead of having to weave an end. So I went out and I checked out the video. I'm like, okay, I'm knitting a swatch. It's going to be no big deal. I can put a knot in this. I've always been one of those people who is always says, no knots in knitting. Don't, no knots. We don't do knots. But I thought I would try it just to, you know, see, see what it is. See how strong it really is. And let me tell you, it is a strong knot. It's called the Magic Knot or the Double Knot. And I will link to um, the, the video in the show notes because it is really cool. Now, I probably won't use this for everything, but for something like a blanket or chair knitting knitting or something like that where I have to add new yarn, I will definitely use this knot. I may even consider using it on a lace project. I don't know what is wrong with my hair today. It is just all in my face. It's tickling my nose. Uh, but I definitely will knit. I, I, I would think about doing it with a lace project, such as the um, Even Star, how I had to transition from one color to the next. I would consider it, but I would try it 
first before I made my final decision because it does leave a little bit of a hard knot sp spot in the in the uh, yarn and I don't know how I would feel about that now in a lace a lace piece it might not show as much but if you're wearing a, a stockinette sweater and that knot happens to fall right in the front of the garment you know on the on the the right side of the garment I'm not so sure how that would look but for a garter stitch or maybe something with a little bit of texture you can probably disguise it a little bit but I did notice that I could go back to my swatch and say oh here's the knot right here and I knew exactly where the knot was couldn't necessarily see it now I used it on a garter stitch swatch I couldn't necessarily see it but I could definitely feel the knot um, when I was looking at it and then last weekend we finally started to build the closet it was not pretty sight <laughs> If you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture of our progress after like three hours or two hours or something like that. We worked on that thing for four hours um, last Sunday and barely got anything done. But one of the main reasons that was was because my husband was adamant about making sure that the closet was square and level. And let me tell you, you cannot make a new room or closet square and level if the existing walls and floor are not square and level. <laughs> we finally figured this out after about almost an hour and a half. Hour and a half and we still had not put up the first board. It was crazy. Finally, we just gave up on making sure that everything was square and level and said, okay, this is going to be the best it is. And we put the first board up. And once the first board was up, things started moving a little bit more quickly. But at that point, you know, we were getting frustrated with the whole thing. We were ready to quit. So I think we only worked on it for about four and a half, four hours, four and a half hours on last Sunday. And then haven't done anything since. But hopefully we will be moving along with that project soon. Now, I was not allowed to touch anything sharp except for the pencil sharpener because the last time we did a project like this and I was given a, um, like a scraper, an electric scraper, within 30 seconds of having it in my hands, I had cut my finger. So I was not one of the, I was not cutting the, the uh, board, Steve was doing all of that. I was pretty much handing him tools and using the pencil. <laughs> yeah, I was not allowed to do that. So, yeah, so that brings me to this week, which has been a little bit better. I got my Knitting Mojo back when I did the swatches earlier this week. And... Uh, so that has been moving along, other than the fact that I've been spending a lot of time. Steve has just turned on the sprinklers out front. <laughs> so if you hear the water, or you hear that, that sound, he's turned on the sprinklers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, I got my Nitty Mojo back earlier this week. And it's been moving along, other than the fact that I've been spending so much time working on getting my podcast re-uploaded. During the day at work, I'm converting files because I'm trying to compress files a little bit more to try and get them uploaded quicker. And then at night, I am trying to upload all of those files, which is usually, you know, five to ten files up to the server. So what is nice is that with WordPress, Unlike Blip, I can upload multiple files at the same time. With Blip, you can only do one file at a time, at least as far as I know. Now, maybe if I did FTP or something like that, it would be totally different, but I do a web upload for Blip. So anyway, um, yeah, so things have been moving right along. Mickey, oh, Mickey. <laughs> Just when I think that Mickey is doing much better, he throws us for a loop. 
I don't know what it is with that with that cat. He just wants to eat everything. Um, I think it was Thursday. Steve got home and and Mickey had got up on the uh, microwave cabinet where we keep chips and crackers and stuff like that and taken one of the bags of tor tortilla chips and pulled it down and ripped into the bag and proceeded to eat tortilla chips. We have no idea how many tortilla chips he ate, but we experienced the side effect for over 24 hours. It was not a pretty sight. Steve was up late taking care of messes. I was up in the middle of the night taking care of messes. I cleaned up messes in the morning. I cleaned up messes before work. I cleaned up messes when I got home from work. It's finally worked its way out. <laughs> yeah, the poor thing. He's, he's not gaining weight. He's still um, hungry as ever. We are trying to give him more food, but then when we give him more food, that seems to cause problems. We're just hoping that as things move forward, he'll just start getting better or will give us a sign saying, look, I've had enough. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's just one day at a time with him. So that's the week in review. What I haven't worked on this week. The things that I haven't worked on this week are um, Coraline and the Lace Infinity Scarf, which I don't think I've even shown you, and also Vanadium. Now, Vanadium I worked on for a little bit and discovered that my stitch gauge is not what it was when I did my swatches. When I did my swatches and found the fabric that I liked for the yarn for the Vanadium sweater, I was getting six stitches per inch. But on the sweater, I am getting seven stitches per inch. So, instead of ripping out the sweater, I'm going to do some calculations and change the um, number of increases and the number of stitches to, um, so that the sweater will fit me. Because at this point, it'll be way too small if I just do the stitch count the way that the sweater is written. However, I did go up a couple of sizes so that I could use the same stitch counts that are in the pattern, even though I'm... Um, Going, I'm knitting, I want to knit a size 36 sweater, I am technically using the notes or the, the pattern for the 44. But um, now I'm going to have to recalculate everything so that I can use a 7 stitch per inch gauge. And because the sweater is primarily stockinette, it's going to be pretty easy to change. They You just have the, the detail on the front where there's some some like a garter rib or whatever. So I don't think that's going to be difficult. I just haven't taken the time to work out those details. I think I will have enough yarn. I had hoped to be able to make the sweater and a pair of socks with this yarn. However, if I can't, I'll deal with that. But um, And I can also shorten the sleeves if need be, but um, at this point I'm not too worried about running out of yarn because I have more than enough. Um, even with the, even with that, if I only use the four skeins, I think I have six, I think I might have five skeins of this one. Even if I only use four skeins, I still had enough, um, to make socks. And then if I, even if I go into the five, the fifth skein, I think I'll still have enough for the sweater. Even though it's going to take more yarn than the pattern calls for. And now for the knitting progress. This week, or since I last recorded, I have worked on the community blanket. The rows are very long. I still have not transitioned into the border yet, but here it is. I'm only showing you a bit of it because I have it on these needles. But I have gotten almost, um, I think I want to do 10 rows here before I start the border because I have, it starts in the middle with the purple and then it goes to purple and white and then pink and purple, and then back to purple. And then I'm going to do for the edge, I'm going to do a garter stitch edge, and I'm going to do garter, I'm going to do um, garter ridges of the different stripes. So 
right now I think I'm on eight re eight rows and I want to do ten and then I'm going to go into the um, the edging so here it is it's huge I mean this is wrapped around so I can't I don't even know how big it's going to be at this point so it is coming along I try and sit down and work on it it takes about an hour or so 45 minutes to do a round uh, but I just try and do it whenever I feel like doing it uh, the next project it, that I've worked on this week is the sock yarn blanket and I decided that I'm only going to show you the sock yarn blanket when I get a full row completed. And I completed a full row this week. Actually, I didn't complete a full row this week, but I completed a row this week. So, here is the sock yarn blanket. I'll start at one end and show you... Whoops, kind of flopping. Actually, this is the end that I finished with this week. So let's start at this end. So here is the row. This top row is the one that I finished this week. I did not, again, I did not do all these squares this week. In fact, this is probably the last one that you saw was that one because there, that's the stitch marker on there. And I have all of these. I love this project. This is a great project for scrap yarn for if you just need a break from whatever you're doing. I have all my ends that I still need to weave in, so get those out of the way it's just a great project that it will eventually be this fabulous blanket that I can remember all the different squares that I had. there's my my peonies socks <laughs> that I have to knit another pair because I lost one I don't know how that happened this is part of my um, what is that <laughs> for um, color affection? This is my first designing trials with lace. So there's my, that's row seven. Uh, I can't remember how many uh, squares that is, but I, I did update the um, project page. So it tells you how many squares are on each row and um, you could probably add them up. But I'm going to try and keep track of when I finish a row. And because um, obviously I wasn't keeping track of when I did squares before. So hopefully this will be a, a little easier to keep track of. So that's the sock yarn blanket. And I also worked on, excuse my reach. I also worked, oops, this is not the right project bag. <laughs> Okay, that's my um, that's my swatches. I did some swatches. I haven't finished my swatches for my tutorial that I'm working on. Um, but let me show you this project first. I worked on trials with lace. I had every intention of having this one fully completed, but it's not quite there yet. And the only reason is because I forgot to wind my yarn two days in a row, and then I couldn't work on it because I was at work and no ball winder and swift at work. But here is where I was last week, there, and that's my progress, or the last time I showed, them to, showed it to you. But you see where this is? This is the end of the first um, chart. So I have one full repeat of the second chart. Now, I still have a bit of yarn left. I have this and this and this left. And I really would like to use most of this up. So what I'm going to do, I've weighed my yarn. And right now, at this point, if I was to end with the just one, one repeat at plus some of the second chart, then I have nine more rows and then the border, the edge. But I'm going, I weighed my yarn and I'm going to do the nine rows and then see how much yarn I have left. If I have more than half of what I started with, which was 50 grams, if I have at least 30 grams, I'm going to try and squeak out a second, a full second. I'm going to squeak out the second repeat of the chart, chart, the second chart, and the next nine rows. 
So, um, I don't know if that's going to happen. It won't, I won't know until I get there. I was hoping that I would have that done by now, but didn't quite get there. And of course, this does not look like anything because it needs to be blocked. I am using a size 7 needle um, with this, so it has it's a little bit more open than the original version of Trials with Lace. And I like it. I only did 8 repeats of the first chart because at the time, I seriously didn't know what, what it was going to take to do the second, repeat, the second chart. So I didn't want to go ahead and do the full 10 repeats of, of the first chart, only to find out that I didn't have enough yarn to do the second chart. And I would rather not have to rip it out. Okay, now I have the correct project bag for, uh-oh, this always happens. I need to get this thing off the needles. Um, oh, that's, it's my basic socks that I have again dropped stitches on and it's the one that's all ready to get cast off but I haven't done it yet. I need to just do it because this is driving me crazy. But this is one of the reasons why I um, like to do two socks at a time because I have just had second sock syndrome on this project. I don't know why but it's been hard for me to get the second sock done. I'm finally making progress on it. I just I just need to grab all these stitches because it, there's a lot of them that have fallen off the needles. I just need to just get it done. It's it's a nice easy project, but I think what the other thing that's derailing me from finishing it is I'm not really thrilled with these needles. These are the Knitter's Pride Carbons. They're not bad needles. I just, I like the metal needles. I like the full metal needles. So this one is all ready to get casted off. I just need to do it. And I probably should just do that today and be done with it so it can stop falling off the needles. And this one, I'm right in the middle of the row. And I made sure that I pulled the needles out far enough. But I think this was where I was the last time I showed you. And I have done that much. I have a heel. It is all moving forward. I just need to continue to move forward with it. Um, like I said, I think I think one of the things is, is I'm not real thrilled with these needles. Um, they're a little stickier than than a full metal needle because they're the tips on these are metal, but then they have the carbon, and the the stitches just don't slide as as smoothly over them as a full metal needle does. And I think that's kind of what's hanging me up a little bit on those. But I just need to get them done. It doesn't take me long. I think um, the other day, I, w I can't remember what I was doing. I don't know if I was bouncing on my ball at work or what it was that I was doing, but I got a good inch of it done pretty quickly. It's just I need to work on it. So... That's the progress on that. Hopefully the next time you see this project, it will be complete. Hopefully the next time I pull it out, I can just power through and get it done. So those are all the projects that I worked on this week. Mostly I haven't gotten too much progress on anything because no Nitty Mojo the first week and spent a lot of time working on WordPress the second week. So, that's it. Sorry. Okay, spinning. And that's really the other reason why I didn't get a lot of knitting done this week. Because when I did have time, I was doing a lot of spinning. I'm trying to prepare and train for Tour de Fleece because it starts next Friday. And I haven't been doing a lot of spinning prior to the last week, two weeks. So I've been trying to kind of build up my spinning time because I know that I would like to spin at least for an hour every single day of Tour de Fleece. Every single day that they're riding. And for some people, that's nothing. But when you have, have barely spun anything for the last couple of months, that's a lot. 
So I've been trying to build myself up. I have noticed that when I've been spinning um, for close to an hour, my hand starts to cramp up and whatnot. So that's one of the reasons why I would like to kind of build myself back up rather than jumping in totally with it. But I have um, been working on my Giggle Jelly Balls. I finished the first, um, the first bobbin. I think I had finished that the last time. Or maybe I had a small little bit left to go. I started the second bobbin. I haven't made a huge amount of progress with the second bobbin yet. Um, I've been, when I've been at home, I've been primarily spinning on the e-spinner, which has the uh, fiber nymph fiber from Knittopia on it. And I've been spinning on that very, very thin that is coming out, the fiber nymph um, Polworth silk. In fact, I might even have to do a four ply. I was planning on doing a three ply, but if I keep spinning at this weight, I'm going to have to do a four ply to make it halfway decent <laughs> in weight because the three ply is just so thin and I want to make a sweater with it and I don't mind having a fingering weight sweater but I might even have to do a lace weight sweater if I do the three ply. So I did a sample of the um, the three ply and the four ply and I like the four ply better. I don't know for sure um, how that's going to work out long term, whatever. I, I think I'll be able to keep keep the consistency. I don't think that's going to be a problem. But I'll have to figure out how I'm going to break up the, the bobbins because I have six bumps total, but I'll have to break them up so I have 12 different bobbins. So each bump is going to have to be broken up into two bobbins, which is not a big deal. So we'll see how that goes. That way I can do um, four ply. And I've also been working on fiber nymph. Uh, I'm sorry, not fiber nymph. I already talked about fiber nymph. I'm also working on Into the World at Work, Polar Silk. Trying to finish up what I started um, quite a while ago now. But I've only been spinning that at work, so that's taking a little bit more time to get through. I had a, another week of a few stash enhancements. Not as many as last time, but a few. So, a couple of podcasters are doing log cabin blankets. Steph from the Mustache Podcast and Karen from Round the Twist. And I have only done one log cabin blanket. It was a kind of a modified log cabin blanket as a snuggle. And I really enjoyed knitting it and I really liked how it turned out. And a couple weeks ago before um, before I placed this order, <laughs> I decided I wanted to make a log cabin blanket. And because I was enjoying so much the yarn that I used for the community blanket, I decided I was going to knit a log cabin blanket for myself out of Deborah Norville every day, which is what's used for the community blanket. However, I couldn't decide what colors I wanted to use in the blanket, and I wanted to be able to see the colors all at once. So I decided to order a bunch of colors. <laughs> I ordered one of almost everything that I had not already ordered or didn't already have, because I, I had the purple, the cream, and the white. And all the other colors were either something I wasn't really interested in or what have you. So I've decided what colors I think I'm going to make the blanket. And if you look at this box, you probably will see which ones they are. Except I'm really kind of nervous because... Okay, here are the colors. It's only three, but I, you probably can see this pink is bright. It is shockingly bright. And I'm sure that I will blind somebody <laughs> with this blanket, but I love it. I love the colors. It's only gonna be three colors, 
I thought about adding in like this blue, but I don't think it's going to be enough. This yellow is too muted. It's not bright enough. I thought also about adding the pink and the green, but they are not really the right colors. These are two, two pastel -y colors. The purple, no, too, pa too pastel -y. All these other colors, these two are just really bright colors. I mean, they are shockingly bright. And all the other colors are not as bright. So I'm going to make it with three colors. I, I know that the pattern calls for more colors, I think four or five. And I'm pretty sure that um, like Karen and Steph are both using more than five, I think. Uh, but I'm going to use these colors. I have not ordered the yarn for it. I just have these sample balls that I had ordered. I will probably order it at some point in the near future, but probably not until I finish the community blanket because I know that needs to be done and I'm afraid that if I start another blanket before that one's done, it'll take forever. But you can hope to see a, a new log cabin blanket out of these colors sometime in the future. And then I will be using the rest of this stuff for either snuggles or um, animals or something. So that was the, the biggest purchase. Then um, I showed you last time I had ordered some Cascade 220 and I did have three more colors that arrived. These were all on back order. So Cascade 220 that I got from the Webb's um, anniversary sale. And then a friend contacted me about doing some mittens. She has a disease, and I'm not exactly sure what it's called, um, or a condition, I guess I should say, and her hands and feet get really cold. And she has this type of hand warmer that she, that's like um, just a small little device that she uses to keep her hands warm. And she wanted some mittens that she could have like a little pocket in, where she could put the hand warmer in the pocket, um, and then... Put, use, use in our hands. So I ordered some Barocco Vintage to be able to knit her some some mittens and then put add a little additional pocket so she can put that um, the hand warmer right in there and then she can just wear the mittens and not have to worry about holding the hand warmer. So I ordered that. Then um, Natalie who is, let me see what her, I thought I had, her um, Ravelry ID is Aquanet. She contacted me and wanted to donate a project bag for the Christmas in July. So I went over to her, um, her shop, and here it is. This is her shop. She makes project bags, and I placed an order with her. And I'll show you my order, and then when I get to the July, uh, Christmas in July knit along, I'll show you what she sent. So I ordered this bag. It's coffee, and it is a really nice bag. Um, she just opened her shop. I think she said that I was her first um, sale, so... But these bags are really, really nice. They are um, have a nice um, interfacing in them, so they're 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 um, they would stand up by themselves if I flatten out the bottom properly, and very very nicely made. And it's a, a really nice size for socks or a small project. The inside there's no pockets or anything. I don't usually use pockets, can't really see inside there, but I don't really use pockets um, too much, so having, not having a pocket is not that big of a deal. But that was my next stash enhancement, which really is a bag enhancement. And then I ordered some uh, toy books. <laughs> I got an email from my friend Angela and she had said it was an email with um, I think it's Annie's Crafts 
Sammy is now getting in the box with all of the yarn. <laughs> um, and she sent me an, an email with, um, they had all kinds of different books with toys. And because we're doing the toy knit along for Knittopia 2014, I was looking at it and I saw this book. And the animals on there, the little chicks or what have you, the ducks, they were so cute, I decided to go ahead and order the book. And there's a couple of um, just really cute things. I really, I really liked the little chicks. They were, they were cute. And you can do different hats for them. Uh, there's a puppy and these cute little elephants. I thought those were cute as well. You can put, it looks like you can give them different outfits. Here's two more with different outfits. Um, a penguin, some whales, here's some mice, and just different different outfits on the mice. Summer, oh, oh, like there's spring, summer, autumn, and winter. That's cute. Didn't even notice that before. So, just some really cute little, here's a little kitty in a chair. Just some really cute um, stuffed Cody. Now Cody has kicked Sammy out of the box, and he's in the box. It's just some really cute stuffed toys that I thought I would make. And then, um, this might have been, now I can't remember where I ordered which. Maybe I ordered them from the both the same place, because this one says Annie's Crochet. I can't remember where I got them from. But then I ordered this book, and this is Crochet. And there were some really cute ones in here. Here's the back page with all the different ones. So you've got the bear and the giraffe, the dog, a teddy bear, this cute little bunny, <laughs> and then the kitty, which is the one that I think I'm going to do. Now, all of these animals in here, you'll notice, have these really sad little eyes. And I will probably try not to make them so sad. <laughs> I don't know... Um, if there's a reason that the, the, the eyes are so sad, but they look so sad to me and I, toys should be happy. So when I do mine, I'm not going to make them sad little eyes. I'm going to make them happy eyes. Here's the giraffe. He's got sad little eyes too, but he's so cute. So that's the, that's the other stash enhancement. Now, remember, I don't make toys. <laughs> But because we're doing a tour and knit along for Knittopia 2014, I figured I had to make at least one toy. And I'm going to try and make more than one. So those are my stash enhancements for this week. And now for the drawings. We have two drawings today, a barmaid's drawing and a Yazzie um, storage container drawing. First, the barmaids. Uh, barmaids is fabulous. I need to place another order with barmaids. I am nearly out of face pudding, as well as uh, my body bars. I think I have three different fragrances of body bars going right now, and um, I think two of them are nearly gone. So I need to place another order myself. And if you haven't already gone over to check out the Barmaid's website, please take some time and go over and look at all of the different things that they have. Their Lolo bars are fabulous for dry skin and keeping moisture in your skin. The Lolo Lips is also fabulous. Check them out. You will love them. So this week, uh, the winner is number seven, and that is September 24. And that is Nancy. And Nancy writes, I bought one for a friend, but I really wanted to keep keep it. So now it's my turn. So Nancy, it really is your turn this time. So congratulations. You have won the, um, the coupon code this week. And I had forgotten what it was for. <laughs> Let me look really quick because, um, hang on. I've moved all of my notes over to um, Evernote. And I had it, I had it down in one section. So you have won the Twisted Lights. So Nancy, congratulations! You've won a coupon for a free Twisted Lights. Sam, don't touch that. That's not for you. 
No. Why don't you come up here and sit with me? Come here. Sammy. Come on. So congratulations. You have won the Twisted Lights coupon. So just get in contact with me and I will send you that coupon code. The next thing is for the Yazzie drawing. And it's for this container. You guys were so creative in coming up with different things to store in this container. And my favorite was the spindle. And yes, small spindles will fit in this. I don't know if you can see. I've got two spindles in there. These are all small. This is a, um, a Bosworth spindle and my small KY. Excuse me. I don't want her digging in that. And then in this one, I have my, another, I have my um, Sammy. She's now moving the, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> in this one, I'm trying to hold the tripod and show you at the same time. So I kind of know what, what Mel deals with. Um, okay, now I have two hands again. So this one I have my Goldie spindle and um, I, I can't remember, Grizz, I can't remember which one this one, but this one is my supported spindle. I have two in there. And then I have also, in this one, I have my Trindle. So you can only get small, um, see this is my, my Golding. It's a very small, um, spindle in there but you can store them in there um anything bigger like a like a beginner spindle or something that's that's wider you wouldn't be able to fit in there but i love that idea that was a fabulous idea which means now i have to have one of these for myself so the winner um will either get this one or I will just order a new one for them on the website. I haven't quite decided yet, but this is a fabulous thing for, um, for the spindles because I, my spindles have always just been on my shelf and every time I knock them, they roll off. It's a pain. This is perfect to, to store my spindles because I have small spindles. So the winner of the Yazi prize who can have either a container like this, or I will offer them the other, the other, um, can you sit still? Sammy's now on my lap. Or I will offer them the other storage container that I had that I reviewed last time. Or if they really want this one, um, and I want to keep it, I will just order one from the website and have it shipped directly to you. So you tell me which you would prefer. If you would prefer this, this type or the other type, which is now across there and Sammy's on my lap. I will put a picture <laughs> in here um, and tell me which one you would prefer and then I will, like I said, either order it on the website or send you the one that I have. And the winner is number 40 and I'm not even going to try and pronounce this. The um, Ravelry ID is M-A-H-O-O-K-T-A-K -K, and that is Nancy. So we had two Nancy winners this week so it's the week of Nancy's. And Nancy said that you could store, she says, it would work great for my polymer clay and clay supplies. I love to make little people who look like my loved ones. It's fun also to make buttons or, or cans, or canes, buttons or canes. So there you go. So Nancy, let me know if you want to have a style like this. And if you want a style like this, Go over to the website and let me know what color you want because I'll probably just order you one from the website. So if you would like to have the other style that was more like a notions pouch or a um, needle case, then let me know and I will send you that one that I have. So that's all the prize drawings. But I am going to set up a thread for another prize drawing for next time. I have some leftover bags. We did bags. In fact, I thought I brought one over here, but I guess I didn't. I'll have to go get one. Hang on. <laughs> okay. 
So I had bags printed for Knitopia. Sit still. And this is what they look like. We talked about bleeding the bags. And this is what we bleeded. They are an, a really nice canvas bag. And they're nice and deep. Let me show you. The gusset. Nice and deep bag. Very nice big bag. But the company I ordered them from, you have to order a specific amount. And even though I didn't need that many, that's what I had to order if I wanted to order them. So I have about nine bags left. Again, they're great bags. They're just a tote bag. They're not zippered or scrunched or, you know, anything like that. But I have nine bags that I have no use for. And they're just taking up space. So I'm going to set up a thread. And then you can just enter to win. I'm going to give away all nine. So it will be a random drawing. Nine bags. So you have a pretty good chance of winning a bag. Again, these are great bags. Um, they will store a lot. So head on over to the thread. And enter to win for a Natopia um, project bag. And now for the information about the upcoming knit alongs. We have the Christmas in July that will start on July 1st. Any project that you finish between July 1st and August 15th that is either a Christmas related item as far as a decoration or something like that that you're making for yourself or a gift that will be given at Christmas time. You can post it in the thread. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, you can post it in the thread for an, a chance to win a prize. And I'm going to show you two of the prizes that we currently have. I'm still hoping to come up with at least one more prize. Um, hopefully some Christmas yarn. If um, nobody wants to got all the cats. What time is it? It is 1.15 and they're wanting a snack. They're all down here. Marty, stop licking that. <laughs> ah! Anyway, um, if I don't get anybody, any of the dyers to donate a Christmas colored yarn, then I might try and just dye, dye something Christmas colored for one of the prizes. Um, so I'll have to get on that if I don't hear from any dyers this week. Anyway, so here are two of the prizes that I have so far. This is one of the Christmas bags that I had purchased um, a while ago. I think this was a Twisted Willow fa Willow's Farm bag. I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is from her. So that's one project bag. And then this is the other project bag from um, Natalie. She donated the you know, I, saw, I showed you the coffee bag a little minute, a couple minutes ago. So she donated this for the, for the knit along. So very nice, very nice bag. So those are two of the prizes for the Christmas in July. So um, get your projects ready to uh, start knitting come July 1st. That'll be um, next, next week. So, and I won't be recording next weekend, so, um, so July 1st, start your projects and then get them posted in the thread. I will get that thread set up, uh, probably sometime next weekend, so you'll have it, it'll, it'll all be ready, so if you're got a jump start and you're ready to start posting on July 1st, you can go ahead and do that. And then we have Tour de Fleece. Last time, I told you what my qualifications were for Tour de Fleece, and then I changed them. <clears throat> You might have already seen the post in the group. And um, here are the new rules. There will be at least two prizes. I have some to show you today. Um, one, you can post a picture of your fiber. You can do this anytime now, between now and the beginning of Tour de Fleece. So, between now and Friday. I think the Tour de Fleece starts on Friday the 29th. Now Marty's getting in the box with the with the yarn. <laughs> Everybody has to have a turn. Um, so between now and Friday, after Friday, you can't post your your fiber by itself anymore. You have to have it spun 
by Friday, after, after Friday. Anything that's posted after Friday, after the start of the tour, if you post just plain fiber after the start of the tour, then it will be deleted. But between now and Friday, the start of the tour, you can post. You can just gather your fiber that you're planning on spinning for the tour and take a picture of it and then post it to the group. That will be your first entry into the group. Okay? Then, um, post a picture of your progress every day that you spin for at least 20 minutes and provide any information about what you are spinning, the, the fiber content, and how you are spinning it. So if you're spinning it on a drop spindle or you're spinning it on a wheel, if you're spinning it with a short forward draw or a, a, um, a long draw, everybody's getting crazy around here. Sammy is now getting in the bag with the community blanket. <laughs> <clears throat> so every day that you spin for at least 20 minutes, you can post. The more you post, the more chances you'll have to win. So definitely get over there and get your fiber posted um, this week so you can have a, an, an extra entry into the, um, the prize drawing. So all of the information is over on the thread. So get over there and check it out. So I have a couple of prizes to show you today. I told you about this one first um, a couple weeks ago. This is the Dripping and Fiber Studio, the balls, that I just struggled with. I had hoped to have um, a bit of it plied up. The, the, the small little bit that I had spun, I was going to ply it, um, Navajo ply it, to show you what it looked like, but I haven't done that yet. But I have four balls, three of which are haven't been touched, and the fourth ball had just a tiny bit taken out of it. So... That is one prize. The next prize is this. It is, I'm not sure what the fiber content is, but it was a CJ Kopeck fiber. And the last thing, oh wait, I have, and I'm not going to, I'm not necessarily going to give all of these. It just depends on how many entries, but I think there'll be plenty of entries for me to give all of these prizes. The next one is um, from Hambly. And it is her uh, Falkland top, and it is this colorway. I don't know, does she have a colorway? Castrata. So that is one prize. And then I have a DVD, Cotton Spinning Made Easy. And that will be another prize. So those four prizes right now and there could possibly be more. It just depends on what I come across and how many people play along. So like I said, get out there over to the group and get your uh, fiber posted um, this week. That's all I've got for you this week. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please feel free to contact me with your comments or suggestions for the show, as I'm always trying to improve things here on Knitting Blooms. You can find me as Bloomy Knitter on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Ravelry. I am not on Plurk and Twitter as much. I am trying to kind of scale back my social media a bit and Twitter, um, Instagram seems to be the the, um, the social media of choice lately. So I'm trying to hang out there a little bit more. Uh, last weekend I did try and post um, a couple of pictures, just trying to get in the swing of things. So you probably find me there more than anything. And you can also find me as Miss Aerobics on MyFitnessPal as well as Fitbit. You can reach me via email at knittingblooms at gmail.com or just leave a comment on the, on the, uh, the group thread or on the blog, knittingblooms.com. So thanks again. Bye for now.